Hello everyone, I am Tacit, and today I'm going to be going over the new Mythic of Champion of Guard. Obviously this video is a little bit late, as many of you know, have been a little bit sick lately, been trying to rest, should hopefully be back to normal within the next week or so, but of course the time since the videos like this one, which will be ending in literally a few hours as I'm recording this, I did want to get out before it's not possible anymore, so that's why I'm recording it now. But hopefully the rest of the recording should be out uh, pretty soon, as my voice is somewhat starting to get back. I still have a bit of a <coughs> cough and everything, but uh, for the most part, have been starting to feel a little bit better as of today. So hopefully next few days be all good. But anyways, let's go over this. This is, of course, the first uh, video we've been doing since version 4.4. So we do have the team sharing uh, ability now, so we will be able to show or easily share every single one of these teams that I'm about to mention. As far as this mythic, I haven't actually gone and claimed it yet. It's a pretty underwhelming one. For the most part, also they did change the order of this. Uh, I need to go find. Actually, I don't need that. What am I doing? We just go to unowned. It's the only thing we don't own. Uh, Champion of Guard. So it gains a bunch of armor. If there's 13 or more skulls, it gives double the armor and ends up creating a mix of blue and red. He is very, very, very similar, obviously, to that of the um, Stone Hammer. Uh, but the main difference being that he might actually potentially be good, mainly because of his plus one to all reds per turn which obviously make him pretty decent within Red Guild Wars. He also is a human knight, so he might have some human knight synergies into the future, especially if knights ever get a 50% mana start. And uh, yeah, he ends up having 60% score reduction, 50% spell reduction. That is the highest overall plus reductions of any uh, troop. Of course, there are troops that are slightly better with their specific score reduction or uh, something that could use their spell reduction better, like Tina 9000, which is still the best 50% spell reduction troop. But overall, it's still not too, too bad. It's still going to have the same issue as Stonehammer, though, in that he kind of blocks too much of, of the mana up front if you're going to be putting him in first or second slot. And uh, that's going to make him pretty obsolete for the most part. It's uh, something you bring out for Red Guild Wars, maybe just for fun, and that's about the furthest you're really going to be going with this troop's uh, usefulness. So do keep that in mind. Definitely not really one that is worth going for, but we're still going to be going for it anyways. And, of course, we do have drop rates for keys now. If you click the question mark here, we can end up seeing the drop rate. So if we're going to open something like um, uh, gem keys here. You can see we have a 0.1% chance per key that we'd end up getting a mythic. Uh, similarly, if we go and do a, I believe this is a level 6 chest right now. And uh, yes, it is. You can tell we're by the thing right there, which is max. It's 40,000, which you would say the seal amount, because most people know the seal amount, not the level of the chest. But level 6 is the max one. And that ends up giving a 0.11% chance, which is obviously a 0.1 higher than that. And uh, both of these keys would have it in. As well as guild keys, or of course, or blah, 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 as well as uh, glory keys, of course, I mean, uh, which has it at a 0.01%, and VIP keys, which is at the percent we kind of already kind of knew that it was at, at uh, 1% on the dots. So about 100 of those generally is at the drop rate. But uh, yeah, we'll just do gem keys, hopefully get lucky off of those, and go from there. So we'll do them 50 at a time, uh, just in case we end up getting one early. I highly doubt we actually would, but would be really nice if we could actually. Uh, Get a quick mythic here would make things a lot uh, easier if we don't have to open up nearly as many gem keys. We obviously have been a little bit low on gem keys because almost every single mythic recently has been just eating up every single one of those. But hopefully we'll get some other drops that we've been needing. Not really sure there are too many. Uh, one interesting thing about this mythic as well, uh, this mythic does allow for the first 16 star kingdom in uh, Gems of War. This is of course from Sword's Edge, uh, same as Champion of Anu, which is the other mythic from that kingdom. And it does allow for the kingdom to now be uh, 16 stars. So uh, first kingdom that was able to successfully do that. Sword's Edge isn't really a particularly good one to have that high, but oh well. Uh, better one than none. That does look like we're going to run out of gem keys here. That's quite unfortunate. Might as well just use the rest of them at this point. And yeah, okay. Well then, uh, I guess we'll hold off on... Actually, I'll use glory keys up till 10,000. And then we'll probably go opt for the uh, go seal key method. I guess for the rest of them. We want to keep some glory keys around. I believe there's still some rares I actually don't have. If I'm not mistaken, I think it's from like a while, while back that I haven't like bothered maxing out. So uh, I do kind of need to open some glory keys and maybe randomly get whatever that one or two troops might be. I know there's still some legends from the past I didn't bother upgrading that I just kind of hoped that we would get like a few more copies of without having to waste the entire blue orb. Because of course a blue orb can save a couple hundred gems here or there depending on when you use it on a certain event. We do want to save those for those purposes for the uh, most part. So as soon as we can get this mythic, we can go into some teams. <coughs> <coughs> also, Summer Imp you can see coming up quite a bit. That is the Imp 
that is currently available right now. I think we've gotten like two or three copies, so if you haven't gotten a copy of that. Uh, there we go, Champion of Guard. So let's go get this thing maxed and uh, go use this thing. And of course, as far as new mythics, the best way generally to go and uh, max out all of its stuff, if I can actually go find it. Of course, Guard is spelled weirdly now. Uh, but we'll go and uh, basically he's already uh, max level. So or, uh, we can just throw a green orb, I mean, to throw it in the max level. And then you can either throw an orange orb at it or throw its first trait down and then trait the other two. Let's see, how many orange orbs do we currently have? we we'll just throw an orange at him at this point. Uh, yeah, we have 11 compared to zero major. How do I still have zero major blues? I have gotten zero major blues since I crafted Zugoth like three, four months ago. That is insane. Yeah, I guess we'll just throw a major orange on it. You can also do first trait and then use two small oranges. But we'll just go back to that like that. Easy enough. And uh, there we go. All traits, all level. Obviously, you don't need to do anything with Ascension because he's mythic. Let's just get him into these teams and uh, go over them. And as I mentioned before, uh, these teams are all going to be in the description. I'll probably make a comment uh, pinned to the video as well. And um, it's basically you. all you'd have to do is simply copy-paste it, uh, whatever the code is, and then just put it into your team slot. So, for example, in the description will be uh, something like a string of these weird number things. You would then go after you copy-paste those random... Uh, uh, bracketed numbers and all that you would click on paste team within your game and it should show these exact numbers that were here earlier and you just copy these from the description uh, you would end up uh, be able to put this into your team and then after you put this into your team you'd be able to go and uh, just simply click, click place team uh, into the game itself and then boom the team would just go straight in assuming you have everything applicable to the uh, team within it but anyways let's go and uh, mess around with these teams real quick see if they are good and as you can see right over here obviously don't buy that but as you can see the first purple star ever uh the first 16 star kingdom the epic star and uh there we go so shiny i don't think it gives us anything particularly good unfortunately but i think it's like extra tribute reward which i guess is somewhat okay uh tribute chance is better though yeah just tribute reward tribute chance is next to 17. Uh, actually what is required for 17. we need another level 20 swords edge and two pets level 20. oh no I don't even have one pet to level 20 in some places. Uh, I guess we need to get Toy Soldier up. Ooh, that is a far, far way away. Uh, that is concerning. Well, the more you know. So, yeah, I think I'm still missing out on one of the kingdoms just for one level 20, let alone two. That's slightly annoying. But anyways, let's go and uh, mess with these things now. So, PvP. Uh, oh, no. I didn't bother repicking some of these teams. They're going to be the ultra annoying ones, aren't they? This is obviously the uh, Rope Dart meta. I'm going to have to skip Rope Dart meta. Uh, let's see, is that as annoying? That's about as annoying. Let me find a little bit realer of a team, though. Oh, uh, well, there we go. A guard against a guard, except there's lust and evil and everything. That's a lot of score reduction. Do we want to fight that, too? Gosh. Why so many annoying ones? I guess we'll fight it. It should be fine. But anyways, we'll start off with this one. This one is a uh, Holy State Astro team. Holy State Astro gives all humans 50% mana start. Uh, champion of Guard is a human. There's a human hero class, however, I am using this with Titan. Just because the human hero class is relatively bad. And obviously Tesla's also human. And we're synergizing her true damage with the uh, life and death weapon in order to hopefully kill. Uh, also Holy Saint Astra as well as Champion of Guard end up gaining a very high amount of armor. Which Tesla will be able to use with boost ratio. And as of version uh, 4.4, the most recent patch we got, we do have auto boost ratios. So uh, if we just simply click on Tesla, it'll show us how much damage she'll do. Which uh, is nice because you would never bother calculating out her damage normally. Because it would be so annoying. But as you can see, she does 116 damage. 108 plus 8. So now we know automatically without having to do any math. So that's kind of nice. And of course, with that half mana start, we'll be able to go and get her mana pretty quick. He ends up creating a uh, mixture of uh, blue and red. Blue, I mean, uh, red feeding back into himself. And blue feeding into the Tesla. And if there's 13 plus skulls, he also gains double the amount of uh, armor there. So not too bad. Uh, fortunately, I can't get any like good mana drops there. I guess we'll just take a red right over here. Hope for Surge. Uh, we did not get the surge. Actually, was it? Wait a bit. But there we go. We'll go get that. We can go to get some damage. We'll just hit our barrier. That won't really matter. Let's get some true damage there. Just make sure Tesla can get her thing. Hopefully the blues will land here. And it does look like uh, it uh, does. So we'll just go take a red. Get it right back. Obviously have our high armor value. Auto uh, does the boost ratio. So now we can see she does exactly 150 uh, across all of his team. So I'll probably ignore that skull as well. as long, Even though we're going to take some damage. Just because we get a kill out of it. And we basically just repeat the cycle, try to get blues back to Tesla, and then we can just wipe off of that. And you basically just rinse, repeat, keep casting Tesla. And that's basically the whole premise of this team, is uh, Tesla spam kill the entire enemy team. 
And uh, that's the team in a nutshell. And of course, uh, we do get slightly higher stats. He does give plus four on the all reds per turn. And of course, both of those two are reds, Tesla and himself. And then we can kill it at Tesla. And there we go. Yeah, that's pretty much how he goes down, at least in this particular team. Next up, we have a... Uh, yeah, we'll go for this one. Uh, next up, we have ourselves a Red Guild War. Obviously, if you're going to bother using this thing, I have two Red Guild Wars, actually. Uh, you're most likely going to try using it within the context of Red Guild War. In this case, we're going to be running it with Sun Spear. I haven't really fully leveled my Sun Spear yet. really need to get it to level 70. I think I currently have it at level 63. But um, I don't personally use it that often. However, one good thing that Sun Spear is good for is Red Guild Wars. It's also good with other Rashkas, which very rarely do you use, though, in this particular instance. This is a team that we do use another Rashka in. So uh, it does have some use there. But the main thing we'd want to go and do is uh, start getting uh, Ragnagord up, get our mana off of there, and pretty much just go from there as far as everything that we need to go do. Just get our mana rushed and uh, basically just auto win from there. So ideally this would give us all of our mana. We're pretty close to that. And then <coughs> we can start um, spamming away <coughs> most of our abilities. So uh, right here we'll just go uh, get our blue convert, get all the skulls going. All the yellow feeding into our Dawnbringer for protection, as well as into our uh, guard if he wasn't didn't already have mana. See if we have any alignments here. Does it look like uh, we have any from what I can tell? So let's go for the safety uh, Dawnbringer, get his ability down, and should pretty much be good from there. Uh, that actually almost just kills him, and then we just go for the Sakima to extremely overkill him. And we just get a bunch of skulls. We can create more blues for her skull alignment off of guard. And yeah, an okay uh, red Gilmore thing if you want to go try it out. Uh, works uh, decently. Obviously, haven't had the chance to test any Guild Wars yet, but uh, seems like it would be a possibly decent Red Guild War option. I think my previous team I was using is a little bit better, but um, I might still try this Red Guild War just to see how it pans out and go from there. Anyways, next up on our list of things, uh, another uh, Guild War one. This one focused a little bit more on uh, Skull Spam, uh, so we'll go and uh, mess with this, see what we can do with this. Actually, did I have to change the banner? I might have actually forgotten to change the banner. Shouldn't be that big a deal, though. Uh, the main thing we need to focus on on this team is uh, basically just get our school spam alignment. That's the main uh, focus that we are going to want to uh, do with this. Doesn't look like we have anything too good to take from the starting board, so let's grab that for now. Start getting a little bit of mana going. Goal, I don't think we really need yet. Ideally, we want to get that for our alignment. We really need to start getting manas going where we can uh, do too much because we do need both the first two slots to have their mana. So we'll go get some skull spam there. Uh, of course, he does do the double on the armor whenever there are 13 plus skulls. And a team like this should be able to get it once it gets rolling uh, to a decent degree. Same as anything that ends up using the Sakima. Should have a pretty decent chance at constantly getting the uh, 13 or at least, you know, more so than uh, a uh, average team would just because of how much skull uh, spam it would uh, have onto the team. Very all double the reds, which could potentially help us as long as he misses here. And it does look like he uh, does, so that will give us the last of the reds we need to actually get this team rolling. And we do get an instant kill off of, uh, what's his name, off of Megavorce, that ends up working out really well. This ends up converting, all the same, similar to Sakima, all blue to uh, uh, Doom Skull instead of Skull. Here we do have 13 plus skulls, however, we don't actually want to go for it. Uh, it does count both skulls and Doom Skulls, uh, or should. Um, it's supposed to, most other things count as both. Actually, I should probably go test that right now just to see. So right now it says only 8, but it should give us, uh, which would be 58, but it should give us more than 58. But we can easily tell. Will it give us 100 or will it give us 158? It should give us 158. Let's just test it. Uh, yes, it does. So as you can see, even though it doesn't show um, Doom Skull on this, it does count Doom Skulls for its uh, boost ratio. So do keep that in mind. That's something I kind of already knew, which is why this team was like that. But I just wanted to double check because I just now noticed that it didn't actually show it on it. But I guess that's just an oversight on their part. Anyways, we'll just kill all that, and uh, there we go. Obviously, we could have taken the extra turn the previous turn. We're just testing the little uh, boost ratio thingy. And we'll go take this one out. Looks like a really annoying freeze team. I might have to skip it if it's too annoying with this kind of setup. Yes, it is. Uh, let's see. We'll go ultra hard. Why not for the last battle? Uh, we do have Bless, so we can kind of semi-counter what he's doing, kind of. Uh, so this is more of kind of a mixed team. Main premise of this is to use uh, Bless onto uh, Champion of Guard. Obviously, the biggest thing that he's missing compared to Stonehammer is his immunities. He has absolutely no immunities whatsoever. However, obviously, if you bless him, he'll have every immunity in the game. So, uh, blessing him is going to be pretty solid because he has a lot of reduction. And then on top of Bless, he'll uh, have a really high mitigation to pretty much everything. Because right now, he could easily die to Devour. He could easily die to Deathmark. 
stuff like that. You give him a blast and stop really going to happen, or if he stops easily. So right here, it looks like he's going to auto-win, which we kind of already expected. He's using uh, the infinite loop team there. So he's just going to get the double uh, skull spam there. Let's see if he's tanky enough to survive long enough to get through it, probably. So we'll go to our yellow there. That'll get us uh, rolling. I'm actually going to want to go for a mountain crusher here, just clear the board and hopefully get lucky off the brown storm. Uh, yes, we did. Perfect. I guess we go for champion of guard now and also hope we get lucky. Uh, there is not 13 plus skulls though, which would be very useful right about now. I don't know. Do we go for mountain crusher? I'm actually going to go for second mountain crusher. Might give him his alignment, but hopefully not. Okay. So it does. It's not good. Keep tanking. You got this. Okay. It does look like he tanks enough. Let me go get his armor back. Keep him alive. Doesn't look like we have any drops here, but we could probably go for a Mountain Crusher and get our mana back up. Hopefully he doesn't get anything too good. And if he does, hopefully we have enough reduction to make sure he doesn't. We'll get this to hopefully get our mana going. Uh, come on, Sakima, get your mana so we can go and cast it already. Uh, let's see. And we actually don't use anything that uses blue on this particular uh, team. We actually have it on minus blue. Uh, so ideally, you just use all of it for Sakima. So it does look like we're getting a little bit of excess blue. Uh, most of the other teams that we were using, actually, I believe all of them were using something to at least soak the blue even if we weren't using anything too good for it. It does look like we kind of need that in a composition. It does help fit well uh, into into it, that's for sure. So I'm going to do this. Hopefully that will give us the chemo alignment off the blue. It doesn't look like it though. Uh, though after that, it should. If there's we don't have alignment after that, there's a problem. Okay, so that's definitely enough boost ratio. We can tell just by adding the 35 to our base value. We have that auto boost ratio, so we don't, also have, we don't have to calculate how, her uh, ability anymore, which is very nice. Uh, anything else that we can get here does not look like it. I think I just throw a guard. Or we get Skull to Skull. Or Skull to Sakima. Or Mountain Crusher into... You know, I'm just going to Mountain Crusher into pure luck. Uh, yes. There we go. That works. Okay. So, let's see. Do we have extra turn alignment? Yes, we do. Is that enough boost ratio? Yes, it is. So we do that. And it should pretty much be dead. We have extra turn skulls and just kill him out with that. And there we go. <coughs> So that is basically Champion of Guard. Bottom line is, yeah, he's not worth getting. Uh, he is really, really average. He's a fun little tool to have. Uh, could potentially come in handy on uh, Guild War days and if humans ever become better and if knights ever become better. But as it currently stands, or even if just red, some red competitions become better. They're actually kind of our couple, but you know. Uh, he's going to be good in any kind of red-oriented team in red Guild War. Maybe ever so, maybe all of, uh, not all of Guardians, in um, uh, red Tower of Doom. But our Red Guild Wars is about as far as his usefulness really goes. In any other context, he's a little bit too slow and gimmicky of a troop. And he's way hard countered. While we didn't really get to see the mechanic, he's hard countered heavily by Devour, Deathmark, things that even Stonehammer is immune to. And uh, things that you can just use a Titan tank for. So you're very, very rarely ever going to bring this thing out as a proper tank. Even though it seems like it should be used for such. It just isn't better than uh, Titan and uh, other similar options. So, uh, really, just Red Guild Wars is as far as this trip's really going to go. So, uh, yeah, definitely one that's worth skipping. Uh, I would not really advise going for Definitely pretty low down there. Uh, it's about as useful as uh, Champion of Anu really is. And in some cases, Champion of Anu can even slightly be more useful. Because he actually has some disable and some uh, speed to him. Whereas this thing is purely defensive with no speed uh, attached to it other than the extra red stats. But anyways, guys, I'll wrap it up for this video. If you still have any other questions, feel free to leave it in the comment section below. Hope you all have a wonderful rest of your week, and I will catch all of you later. Goodbye, everyone.